Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at the new Red Book which has come out for 2023. This is the Family Court practice uh, for 2023. I declare an interest immediately and I am, am involved to a very small extent in the what is actually in the book. Uh, and I use it regularly in court, so therefore I'm bound to be biased in my view that it is a first-class book. <clears throat> the new edition um, for uh, 2023 has been edited again by District Judge Charles Prest, King's Counsel. Charles has done a fantastic work and I must play, uh, pay very great thanks to him and everybody else involved. And I'll do that in a minute uh, because this is an important book. It first appeared in 1993 uh, after, in fact, the time I'd been called to the bar. And originally we didn't have one real practitioner's book as such. And this came along and there were, of course, other other types of work available. But I believe what has now happened, and I say this with pride, the Red Book is now the, the ultimate source as the practitioner's guide for um, family law. Uh, obviously, the family procedure rules are very, very important. Um, I have described this in my review, the ultimate family practitioner title, as we enter a new era. I'm going to come on to that in a minute because what I'd like to do is show the book first of all because at the moment I think we're getting to a crossroads with where we are. The reason for that is because as Charles has explained in, in this book, here it is, there's the front and there's the side. It's a very heavy book still, still running to a large number of pages, uh, well over 3,000. Um, the, the reason I'm saying we're at a crossroads is because Charles has been able to keep this book down in terms of its size, which I think is a magnificent achievement. If we look at the inside cover, you see he's kept the um, calendars after a discussion with one or two people who wanted them, needed to have them. I'm very glad they're still there. There's some basic information on the back about oaths. Then on the front, the everyday law are some of the main um, rules and acts. Very, very helpful information uh, right at the beginning. Uh, the back of the book, of course, has um, a very, very substantial index, and it's by paragraph numbering. You can remember that on the sides there, you've got shaded areas for the various uh, bits of the book that you want to have a look at. It's in one volume, and I'm very glad it's remained there. The first bit is the procedural guides for that shaded area. <coughs> then the next bit is the... Um, legislation itself obviously the children act being one of the main pieces of legislation but lots of other ones then of course you've got the really very substantial bit in the middle of the book which is the family procedure rules and what you've got of course is what we really are the most helpful uh, grateful to have and that's the notes that go with what is their important notice for instance there and then you've got other other notes all the way through <clears throat> giving you information which is invaluable, frankly, for those in practice. Then after that, you've got, um, uh, this is actual um, placement case review work and so forth there as part of the statutory instruments. Then after that, you've got the practice guidance, the PGs. And then right at the end, you've got um, the international element there. And what I would advise you to do with this book is to read the uh, preface at the beginning. Can I just say that when this book was published, uh, obviously Her Majesty the Queen died um, in September of last year, that's 2022. Uh, and obviously there's a lot of referencing where there's an, a change between uh, references to Her Majesty and the changes that have taken place with the ascension to the throne of uh, King Charles III. Um, and it does mention that because obviously there's there's an attempt to be as accurate as possible. That's, Charles has been brilliant at doing that. That's the list of people who are involved. A very impressive list of practitioners in this area. And I'm not going to pick out anyone at all, but just to say they're all extremely important people in this area of law and we, we require their information to help make this book what it is, which is the fundamental guide. There's the introduction to the work for 2023 and Charles starts off with daily bread as he calls it, which is the various things that have 
um, taking place, decisions and so forth. Then he talks about the Red Book 2023 and he mentions the work that uh, others have done. I, I'm included in that as the working uh, group in terms of a soundboard to give advice about how the book um, is used in court. And then the various pieces of information about what is happening with uh, updating dates. And then after that, um, right at the end, there are some developments on the digital version at the back. And I'm going to come on to that because you can see the, the content section there, the structure of the book. And this is really for people who've never seen this book before. It shows you how the book is structured. Those are the pet, pet, uh, the actual parts, and then you've got the, the shading. But can I just say, on the question of the um, developments on the digital version, there's a PDF version um, which has basically started to come out. Um, like the online version, it unfurls, he says, to individual sections and rules, making it much easier and quicker to find the material you need. And the online version now allows access to every edition from and including the Red Book from 2020. So you've got an overlap. The reason I'm mentioning that even now is because when you think of both of the Red Book and the White Book here as well, um, the White Book is expanding. The Red Book is expanding. Charles has been able to take some bits out, but there are lots that need to be kept in. The point I would make with, with all of these versions is we are actually at a point where we are now relying much more on the PDF and the online versions of what we have. Um, obviously, with Thomson Reuters, they have Pro, um, ProView, which is a slightly different system. It's like an e-reader system. But I believe that that is going to come in a, in a much bigger way uh, in the next few years as the judges look for links directly to what they will be using. At the moment, a lot of them still have these books, but I think in the future it's going to go much more towards uh, computer-driven um, systems. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, <clears throat> we have to now decide where we're going to go with these books in the future. But for the time being, let me talk about the Red Book, because let me give some basic facts about it. It covers the entire range of family business and contains all the essential materials that you need to practice if you are actually in the family court. Um, the founding editors in 1993 were the late uh, Joanne Bracewell and Anthony uh, Cleary, and it's now taken, uh, been taken on by District Judge Charles Prest. <clears throat> the new edition obviously has been fully updated and as usual you get the uh, inclusion of the latest case law, uh, full coverage of new amended legislation, practice directions and guidance and you've also got um, ex very useful annotated statutes and rules together with scores of unique step-by-step -step procedural guides which are towards the back and that will help you to find what you're looking for. Um, as I've always said with all these books, start with the introduction because that will give you the basis of uh, what is new for this edition and what's been happening since um, 2022. We obviously have all been through the COVID pandemic and one of the problems with some of the um, more recent editions is that um, obviously there was a lot of change uh, brought about by uh, COVID. And of course, the virtual hearings have now taken off in a much bigger way. And I'm very grateful uh, to, and to the judges and everybody else. The only thing I would say is there are occasions where you have to have attended parties hearings. And so don't feel that the virtual hearing is the be all and the end all. Um, I think you'll also find that all the amendments to the uh, procedural rules, the, both the FPR, um, the Family Procedure Rules, and the CPR, um, are extremely helpful. And I would like to uh, also place on record my thanks to Charles Prest for the work he's done and the fact that he's looked at this um, his task as editor in a new way. And without saying anything further at the moment, other than that this book is a very important book and the ultimate source uh, with all the people who are involved in uh, writing it, uh, I do see uh, further very big changes taking place, I think, as I suspect, and I'm not going to commit it, of course, at all, but I suspect we will be looking in the future 
at the online systems uh, in much um, much greater detail in terms of usage because for instance let me give you a practical example as a practitioner at the moment when I do a position statement uh, or some sort of skeleton argument uh, I will be it adding links to the various uh, places in the book and to case law whatever it is that I'm using and now that's the old system if you like uh, in terms of the procedurals and where we are at the moment with producing a lot of this information but in the future what is happening at the moment is I am being asked sometimes to give links to perhaps something like the online version of the Red Book. Now it's fine if you've got it, if you haven't got it you have to use the old version or you will use whatever you've got which will link get the judge to read the relevant bit that you want him to see or her to see. Can I say that I think in the future that's going to become probably more more of a practice um, amongst counsel when they're producing information and the reason for that is because when I'm doing virtual hearings um, and the judge is in either at home or in a, in a court somewhere, it can be anywhere, quite often I've had a court case although it's based say in central London the courtroom will not be in central London, it could be in a totally different location because the judge is hearing it from that court, not from a central London court. Now, the reason I say that is because the judge is then using a number of computers in order to identify what is happening. First of all, he's going to be reading the details that I've produced or my learned friend has produced concerning the skeleton arguments. And then quite often, if he's got the link immediately on his computer to click, he could be theoretically go straight to the bit in the family law practice and that will save a huge amount of time in terms of trying to find things if it's a particular point that I need to press with the court. Now I say that because I think that's one possibility for the future. I'm not suggesting it's going to happen in that way but I think as we look towards the next three or four years with family law and with the civil procedure rules themselves as well. I can foresee quite a lot of change quite quickly, especially as older people like me who are from effect, almost effectively from the pre-computer era, although I'm not really because I was caught in the bar in 1991 and the computers were just coming in at that time. But I go back a lot earlier than that because of another career and when we didn't have computers. So therefore I can see it in a, a different way. But I do think that the Red Book in its current form is invaluable, especially for younger people. And the point behind this particular presentation is for younger practitioners coming up who will say, yeah, I know all about these books. And then pr probably they might need a little bit of perhaps the experience I've got to say, well, this is what we've got. Um, this is what we're doing at the moment. Now the question is, where are we going? because we can't have these continually huge increases in the number of pages for these volumes. It's like the law reports, um, where you originally you would have one, one book, which is the law reports for a year. You get to a point now where you've got about four books for the law reports for a year sometimes, which shows you the amount of law that uh, is being created in terms of precedent. And of course, you've got a huge number of Acts of Parliament. So with those points, I hope I haven't sta scared anyone off. Thank you very much for listening to me with this particular review. And a very big thanks to uh, LexisNexis for continuing to publish this first class book. Um, without it, we would have a great deal of difficulties. Uh, I'm aware of what they would be. And I'm very grateful for all the assistance they give us. It makes our lives a lot easier. Thank you to all. Bye bye.